In this video, I'm gonna be going over boron and its correct dosage and form in order to try to maximize our boosting testosterone abilities. So just to give a background on boron, it is a metalloid element, meaning it has metal and non-metal characteristics. Some of its functions include cell wall strength and development, cell division, fruit and seed development, sugar transport, and hormone development. One of the main benefits of boron is its ability to decrease inflammation and increase testosterone. Now I have another video that I will link in the description that you guys can check out that I go over some of the studies on boron, but in this video, we're just gonna be focused on the dosage and form of boron that should be taken as supplementation. So the first thing I wanna go over is dosage, and we'll look at some studies here to see what the right dosage of boron is. So in this first study titled, Nothing Boring About Boron from 2015, we see that after one week of supplementation in 20 healthy males, we see a significant increase in free testosterone from 11.83 picograms per milliliter to 15.8 picograms per milliliter. Now this is important because protein bound hormones cannot exit the capillaries. So testosterone can be either bound to albumin or some other kind of protein, but free testosterone is what's able to be used up by the cells. If testosterone is bound to something called sex hormone binding globulin, then it is not able to reach the cells and have its effect on the body. So we're not as interested as increasing in total testosterone because that won't differentiate whether it's free testosterone or the, or the one that's bound to sex hormone binding globulin or something like that. What we are interested in increasing is free testosterone, which is bioavailable to all the cells. This study also showed a decrease in estrogen from 42 picograms per milliliter to 26 picograms per milliliter. Also, all inflammatory biomarkers such as IL-6, CRP, and TNF-alpha were also decreased by around 33%, 50%, and 30% respectively. The dose in this study that was used is six milligrams of boron per day. So, so far, a dose of around six milligrams of boron has the ability to decrease inflammation and increase testosterone. Now let's look at another study here from 2010 that showed after seven days there was a 28% increase in testosterone and a 39% decrease in estrogen. The dose in this study was 10 milligrams per day of boron. So this study in particular did not measure inflammation biomarkers, but it had an effect on testosterone at 10 milligrams per day. And now the third study I want to look at is titled The Effects of Boron Supplementation on Lean Body Mass, Plasma Testosterone Levels, and Strength in Male Bodybuilders. This study had participants only taking 2.5 milligrams of boron per day, so a much lower dose than what we've seen in the previous studies. And after seven weeks, they found that plasma boron concentrations were increased, but no difference in testosterone was found. So this tells us that the boron at 2.5 milligrams was absorbed, it's enough to make a difference in the blood cells, but it did not actually contribute to any kind of a difference in the testosterone levels. So 2.5 milligrams per day may be too low of a dose to have an effect on testosterone. And again, this study did not measure inflammation so we don't know its effects on inflammation. In terms of safety, it's been stated that the upper limit of boron is around 20 milligrams per day. That's around where you start feeling some of the side effects of boron, such as like upset stomach and things like that, mostly nausea, stuff like that for the most part. But the highest dose that we saw was 10 milligrams per day in one of the studies, and that's half the toxicity dose. So we're nowhere near it, to be honest. And six milligrams even showed some promising results. So you can even go as low as six milligrams. So again, sticking to around the six to 10 milligram dosage per day of boron to increase testosterone and decrease inflammation is probably the sweet spot. 2.5 is too low. And if you're getting as high as the 20 milligrams per day, then you might start feeling some of the side effects such as GI upset and things like that. Now let's move on to formulation, the kind of salts that are bound to boron in these uh, complexes and these supplements. I was not able to find any information on which kind of supplement or which kind of formulation of boron is superior to another, but I did find some forms of boron here that I'll kind of go over its benefits and why you would take which one. So the first one I'm gonna go over is boron glycinate, which is similar to like magnesium glycinate or any kind of uh, mineral or supplement that's bound to glycine. Glycine has relaxing and calming effects. So this is better to be taken at night as it may calm you and help you get into a deeper sleep, help you sleep through the night better. So boron glycinate probably better to be taken at night. Another form of boron is boron picolinate, which I found in the supplements made by Thorn. Thorn is a big company. It's a very good company in the supplement industry. They do a lot of research and back up their claims. And it's a company that I believe in. I am not sponsored by Thorn, but they are one of the companies that I do trust with their products. And they have formulations of boron picolinate and boron glycinate. And these should be research backed formulations that work and are absorbed by the body. Now there's another kind of boron, which is called a boron complex. This is a mixture of popular boron salts. 
They usually come in citrate, glycinate, and aspartate. So it's some kind of a mixture of these three salts with boron. This might be your best bet to increase absorption and increase effects and get a little bit of the effect of each salt in one supplement. So in terms of the optimal boron dose and formulation for decreasing inflammation and increasing testosterone, it's probably gonna be in the range of six to 10 milligrams of some kind of a boron complex. Or if you really care about getting a deeper sleep, then probably boron glycinate. If you don't necessarily care about your quality of sleep, if you're already getting into quality of sleep, then maybe boron picolinate to be taken during the day because boron glycinate is something that will help you fall asleep at night. Also, testosterone levels are lowest at night, so you can kind of get a boost in your testosterone levels at night. So that kind of has a dual positive effect. However, some people like to take their testosterone boosters before their workout. So taking boron glycinate during the day when you're about to go to the gym is probably not the best idea. Boron picolinate or the boron complex in that instance so that you can get that extra boost of testosterone before your workout. So again, the timing of when to take boron, it matters on your specific goal if you wanna do it before a workout out to kind of boost your testosterone or at nighttime to kind of help you with your sleep. Now, some studies have shown that after some time of supplementation with boron, levels of estrogen and sex hormone binding globulin do increase. So it might be better to cycle boron on and off to kind of minimize this effect and minimize tolerance. So maybe five days on and two days off or two weeks on and one week off, something like that might be a good strategy to try to lower the tolerance of boron and not have an increase in estrogen and sex hormone binding globulin. And as I mentioned previously, testosterone that is bound to sex hormone binding globulin does not allow the testosterone to have its effect on the cells. So we want an increase in free testosterone. Now it's been hypothesized that boron binds to sex hormone binding globulin and after some time the body adjusts and it goes under homeostasis and it releases more sex hormone binding globulin. And so now there's an increase in sex hormone binding globulin and it has a higher affinity for testosterone than for estrogen. So it's more likely to bound to testosterone. So you have a decrease in free testosterone and basically an increase in estrogen because the sex hormone binding globulin is binding to that testosterone. Now something else that I want to just quickly mention is that boron also increases the absorption of vitamin D. So if a boron deficiency exists that may interfere with the ability of vitamin D to be absorbed by the body. Now I have other videos on testosterone such as this one on Tunkat Ali which you can check out. Now Tunkat Ali is another supplement that has shown benefits in increasing testosterone and I dive into the studies in that video so please check that one out. I will also link my other videos on testosterone supplements such as boron, shilajit, and fedosha agrestis, and I'll put them in the description for you to check out. But if you like this video on boron dosage and formulations, then please leave a like and subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you guys next time. Thank you.